everybody. Hi, my name is Cobra Caroline, and this is my friend Annie the Squirrel. Annie. Annie the Squirrel is an Eastern Gray Squirrel, and she is from Kids Nature Shows. She's one of the animal puppet friends that we have at Kids Nature Shows. And today, she and I are here to help you learn more about animals in fall and winter. Yeah, fall is a season of change in the months of September and October and November. Oh boy, lots of changes are happening all around us because plants and animals are getting ready for the cold time of winter. And so animals have all different ways that they use to survive in the time of winter, but they have to get all those things ready in the fall. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Today here at Kids Nature Shows, it's actually fall. If I look outside, I can see that the leaves are changing from green to colors. Oh, do we have a leaf here? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to help, help me pick this up? Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Look, here's a green leaf. Green leaves have chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, that stuff that plants have in their leaves that help them convert sunshine into sugar. Do you like sugar? Me too. I know you actually really like acorns. I know you have your little acorn that you love there. Mm. I love sugar. And so plants can actually just turn sunshine into sugar with the green chlorophyll that's in their stems and leaves. But as winter turns to, I'm sorry, as summer turns to fall and gets ready for winter, the chlorophyll gets absorbed into the plant. And when that happens, can you help me pick up a color leaf? Okay. When that happens and the chlorophyll goes away, the leaves turn different colors, yellow and red. And then the leaves do what in the fall? Well, oh! They fall, don't they? They fall off. And if I look out my window right now, I can actually see all different colors of leaves. And every time the breeze blows, they come falling down. And that's how the trees get ready for winter. But what about the animals? You know, trees are not just dropping leaves. Trees are dropping something else, aren't they? Oh, it's your favorite. Mm -hmm. Right now, can I help me with these? Oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna pick these up. Oh, I think we dropped one. Look, do you know what these are? Mm, you like these, don't you? What are they called? Whoa, they're acorns. Acorns are seeds that, what, do you know what kind of tree makes the acorn? It's the oak tree. That's right, oak trees make acorns and then they drop all the acorns all over. In fact, some of you may have oak trees in your yards and your parents may not be super happy about having to rake all those acorns up every fall, but the animals like squirrels, they love them. And so they'll pick up acorns and they'll carry them around and then they'll dig a hole and they'll bury the acorn for later. Squirrels, they stay awake all winter and they don't migrate. So they don't get to go inside of a nice warm home and they don't get on an airplane and fly to Hawaii for the winter. Nope. Squirrels, they're just out and about all winter long. They have nice thick fur. Look at his tail. See how furry that is? And they can actually wrap their body around with their tail. So it helps keep them nice and warm. Um, and then they have all these nice acorns and other tree seeds that they've buried all over the place that they can remember and then go dig up to eat later. But you know what? Squirrels don't remember where all of them are. Well, it's true. I know. Oh, don't, don't be sad. It's okay. In fact, squirrels forgetting where acorns are is the number one way that new oak trees are born and grow. Yeah, that's right. Squirrels help plant the forests in North America by burying acorns and forgetting where a lot of them are. They're actually planting the seeds of trees. And today I'm going to ask you, you to pretend to be an acorn. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put my friend Annie down for a minute because I'm going to be an acorn with you. So everybody, see if you can get enough space that you can spread out just a little. We can say goodbye to our friend Annie. She's saying bye. She's bye. You're such a sweetie, Annie. Oh, I'm going to put you down here in your little burrow. So now what we're going to do is I want everybody to imagine that you're an acorn 
and I want you to, to hunker down. If you can, sit down, and I want you to curl yourself into a little ball, and I want you to imagine that a squirrel has buried you. It's the fall, and you're down in the soil, and you're all tucked in. And then winter time comes. Ooh, it's cold now. Cold. Oh, but now your soil is warming up a little bit. And, oh, I think it's raining. Now I want you to slowly stand up. Slowly stand up. You've come up out of the soil. You've sprouted. You've sprouted. And now I want you to spread your arms out like this. Spread out your arms. You're spreading your branches. Oh, it feels good. You're growing little oak tree. And now I want you to spread your fingertips apart <laughs> like you have leaves. Isn't that nice? And now I want you to raise up on your tippy toes and reach for the sunshine. And imagine that your fingers are leaves and they can turn the sunshine into sugar. Yay! All because a squirrel planted you and forgot you, you were able to grow up into a great big oak tree. Wow, those squirrels are great. That's awesome. And you know what? We're gonna meet another animal friend that is related to the Eastern gray squirrel, but he's a ground squirrel. His name is Chippy. Let me get him out for you. Chippy, Chippy buddy, come on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chip, where are you? Chippy, whoa. He's, oh. This is my friend Chippy. He can be a little rascal sometimes, whoa. He's, does anybody know what kind of a squirrel he is? He's a chipmunk. He's Chippy the Chipmunk, <laughs> and chipmunks are little ground squirrels that live all over eastern North America, and they like to spend most of their time on the ground, or sometimes they make burrows. Well, actually, they, they make burrows in general, and that's where they like to live. And in the summer, you'll see them out and about running all around, but in the fall, they get pretty busy. Mm -hmm. They are like squirrels in that they like to gather nuts and seeds, and they put them where do you put them? In your in your cheeks. That's right. Hey, have you ever seen a chipmunk with big puffed up cheeks? I want you to puff up your cheeks like a chipmunk. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty funny, isn't it? Yeah. And so chipmunks will fill their cheeks with nuts and seeds, and then they go down in their burrow where they stash the nuts and seeds for winter, but they put them all in one place in their burrow. Then they line their burrow with nice leaves and grass and things to make it nice and cozy. Yeah, I know you like to be cozy, don't you? Mm -hmm. And then they'll curl up into a ball with their little tail wrapped around them and they'll go to sleep during the winter. But they don't sleep the whole time. Nope. Sometimes they wake up and when they wake up, They'll eat their nuts and seeds that they've saved for the winter, and then they'll go back to sleep again. So I want you to imagine that you're a chipmunk. Can you imagine that you're a chipmunk? <laughs> now I want you to imagine that you're gathering nuts and seeds, so puff your cheeks up. Okay, now dig a little burrow. Dig a little burrow. Can you go like this? Now I want you to go down in your burrow. Imagine you're going down in your burrow. And I want you to put your nuts and seeds down. Okay. Now we're going to tuck ourselves in and go to sleep for a minute. Mm, I think it's been a couple days. We're waking up. We're going to have a little snack. Mm, time to go back to sleep again. Mm. And then when spring comes, it's time to come out and play. So chipmunks, they don't exactly hibernate the way we think of animals just sleeping all winter. They kind of sleep a lot and then they eat and then they sleep. Hey, that sounds like a good way to spend the winter. I'm with you, buddy. Let's eat and sleep the whole time. <laughs> all right. We're going to put our good friend Chippy the Chipmunk down. Whoa, Chippy, where are you going? Whoa. Hey, Chippy, where are you? What, where did Chippy go? Does anybody know where Chippy is? Where's Chippy? Chip, well, oh, 
my goodness gracious, my little chipmunk friend. He just ran off. All right. Well, bye. Bye, Chippy. It's good to see you. So we're going to meet an animal next that we think of when we think of hibernation and winter. But he's a baby. It's time to meet the baby. He's a cutie patootie. His name is Baby Bear. Baby Bear. Come on out, little guy. Oh, he's a little shy. Here he comes. Oh, <laughs> your feet are so big. <laughs> this is my friend, Baby Bear. Baby Bear is a black bear. And you can actually find black bears right all around North America, even in cities, even in Washington, D.C. Sometimes they make their way into Rock Creek Park. And bears are mammals just like you're a mammal. You're a mammal. You're a mammal too. Mammals are animals that have hair or fur, like my friend Baby Burr has nice fur. Hey, you do too. Touch your hair. Oh, you want to touch my hair too, Baby Bear? Okay. <laughs> so your hair is fur. You're a mammal. Also, mammals are warm-blooded, which means that we make our own heat from the inside of our bodies. If you put your hand right here, right on your neck, can you feel that? You want to? Yes, I know. You're smelling me. That's that's fine. So if you put your hand on your neck, it should feel warm because as a mammal, you're warm blooded. So you're maintaining your body temperature at about 98.6 or so degrees. And bears are also mammals. So they also regulate their body temperatures. But in the winter, bears will go down into burrows and their body temperature drops. It gets really cold and they go to sleep. The big old bears, they curl up and they just sleep. But something amazing happens to sleeping mommy bears. You see, mommy bears, you miss your mommy? Yeah, you'll see her again soon. We'll get you back together again soon. Mommy bears actually give birth to their babies in the middle of winter while they're asleep. Your mom gave birth to you while you well while she was asleep. I know. Wow, it's pretty awesome. So while the mommy bear is sleeping in hibernation, she gives birth to the little baby, and the little baby bear comes out and then starts drinking mommy's milk. That's another thing that makes mammals special. Mammals are animals that drink milk. And so the baby bear drinks mommy's milk and grows and grows and grows, bears become really, really big. And you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to imagine what it's like to be a big old bear coming out of hibernation at the end of winter. But first, we're going to put our cutie patootie baby bear friend back. Would you like to say goodbye to baby bear? <laughs> He's, oh, do you want to eat the camera? Oh, okay. That's Mm -hmm. <laughs> he likes to chew on everything, you know, baby bears. That's here you go, buddy. You can go back into your little burrow there. Get on back in there. There you go. So imagine you're a bear and you're not a baby bear. You're a grown up bear. Maybe you're a mommy bear. Maybe you're a big old daddy bear, but you're sleeping and it's winter. <sighs> go to sleep. <sighs> But now spring is coming. It's getting a little warm. I want you to kind of stand up a little and I want you to stretch out. Stretch, stretch, stretch your muscles like a bear. Stretch your claws like a bear would stretch. And now I want you to roar, go, rawr, rawr. I'm a big old bear. I'm coming out of hibernation. And I'm hungry. Oh boy, I want to eat some berries and some nuts and some seeds. Mm, I'm a big old bear coming out of hibernation, stretching my big old bear muscles, reaching down to my toes. Oh, reaching back up to the sky. Yeah. Roar. Oh boy. That felt really good to be a bear for a minute, didn't it? You know, sometimes when I get out of bed, I'm not even kidding you, I pretend to be a bear just to get my muscles going. When I get out of bed, I'm like, I'm a bear getting out of bed. 
So hibernation happens with bears, but it also happens with another group of animals that have to survive in the cold winters, animals called reptiles. And we're gonna meet a reptile right now. His name is Tank. Tank, come on out, little buddy. Oh, he's a real sweetheart. Well, he's a tough, tough sweetheart, that's for sure. Here he comes. Well, oh, Tank. Tank, can you come out of your shell? Don't be shy, little buddy. Oh, here he comes. Here, he, oh, Tank. <laughs> You're so cute. Oh, I know, I'm, I'm holding you up. You wanna be down, but uh, don't worry, buddy. I'm not gonna drop you. I'm gonna hold you really, really steady here. Tank is a turtle. And turtles that live in our neighborhoods here in North America have to hibernate in the cold of winter. Reptiles are a little different from mammals in a couple of ways. First of all, instead of having hair like you do, can you feel your hair? Oh, you want to feel my hair? Does it feel nice? Okay, so turtles don't have hair. Turtles are reptiles, so they're actually covered in scales. Scales are like your fingernails. Can you see your fingernails? <laughs> Can you touch your fingernails? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so fingernails are actually made of keratin. It's not carrots. No, it's not carrots. It's a protein called keratin. And keratin makes your fingernails and your hair and reptile scales too. So reptiles are not slimy. A snake is not slimy. Neither is a turtle. <laughs> They're nice and dry. Another difference between mammals and reptiles is that mammals are warm-blooded. Remember when we put our hand on our neck? Can you do that for me? You want to put, okay, yep. How do I feel? Do I feel warm? Yeah? Okay. So a reptile's body is not the same. They're cold-blooded. So their bodies take on the temperature of the air or water around them. So in the winter, when it's really cold, reptiles couldn't move. They wouldn't be able to function if they were out and about. So reptiles dig deep into the dirt, or sometimes they go down into the bottom of a pond in the mud, and they hibernate. They actually, they don't eat. They don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> they just <sighs> sleep all winter. And then when it gets warm, they'll come back out. Now, here in Virginia, it does sometimes get a little warm on certain wintertime days. Like in January and February, it could get up into the 60s or 70s here in Virginia. And when that happens, you might see a snake or a turtle out in the sunshine. But when it gets cold, which it will again if it's January or February, they go right back into hibernation. So that's how reptiles survive. They hibernate. They go to sleep down in the dirt all winter long. But some animals do something differently. They migrate. Now, you don't migrate, do you? You don't buy a plane ticket to Hawaii? No, turtles can't buy plane tickets. That's why you hibernate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put you down, buddy. So you can, yeah, don't worry. I'm going to be really gentle. I'm going to be really gentle. Do you want to say bye to Tank the turtle? <laughs> He's such a nice turtle. All right, here you go, buddy. I'm going to be really gentle. Okay. So our next animal friend migrates and he does not have to buy a plane ticket. He has his own wings. His name is Millennium. Let's meet him. Oh, you know what though? I have to put this glove on because Millennium, he has really sharp claws. They're called talons. So I wear this glove so his talons don't scratch my skin. So let me get him out for you. Come on out here, buddy. Oh, he's really nice. Here he comes. This is Millennium. <laughs> this is Millennium Falcon. He is a peregrine falcon. And peregrine falcons live all across North America and they migrate. So some animals will hibernate, some animals store food, and some animals fly south for the winter. Interestingly, here in Virginia, we actually have animals that both fly south from Virginia to places that are further south, and there's animals that live north of us up in Canada that actually come here for the winter. So there are animals that actually migrate to Virginia to spend the winter. How awesome is that? It's pretty cool. So the peregrine falcon actually will migrate. 
and they can fly faster than any animal on earth. Yep, that's right. You guys are like super duper fast. And when they're migrating, they can soar for hundreds of miles and they can fly ridiculously fast speeds, over 100 miles an hour. And the reason that they migrate is to get to places where they can still find food. So in the wintertime, their feathers, so birds are feathers, and feathers, guess what they're made of? Keratin, same thing as your hair, fingernails, and reptile scales. Boy, almost everything's made of keratin. No, not everything. No, okay, no. Like fish scales, not made of keratin. No, okay, all right. So, so peregrine falcons migrate like so many other animals so that they can find food to eat. In the wintertime, a lot of food disappears. So animals have to go where they can eat if they're not gonna hibernate. And so the way that peregrine falcons migrate is they kind of, they don't do it all in mass. Like some birds will flock. Peregrine falcons are more loners. They kind of go by themselves. And today, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're, you're, okay, thank you for, for checking out my hair. I appreciate that. Please don't mess it up. <laughs> so today we're gonna migrate like a millennium. We're gonna migrate like my friend Millennium Falcon. We're gonna migrate like a peregrine falcon. So first what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my good friend Millennium Falcon back. So would you like to say goodbye Falcon? Goodbye Millennium Falcon. Oh, do you wanna, he wants to peck at the screen too. Okay, that's great. All right. Bye-bye, buddy. You're such a nice bird. What a great bird. So now we're going to fly. Are you ready to fly? Here we go. All right. So first, stand up. And I want you to, if you can, lift one leg. So you're standing on one leg. Okay, look, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. So now I want you to tuck. These are your wings. I want you to tuck them in like this. Okay. Now I want you to bend forward just a little. Can you bend forward? Now imagine you're on a cliff, you're a peregrine falcon. It's November, it's getting cold, it's time to go. Stretch your wings out and start soaring through the sky. Go like this, you don't even have to flap, you're just soaring. We're moving back and forth, zooming. You're zooming through the sky. Whoa, you're looking at things below you. There goes some trees, there goes a lake. Whoa, and now you're down in South America where it's nice and warm and you're gonna land. Everybody kind of jump up and land. Tuck your wings in. Whoo, that was great. We got to soar through the sky like a falcon. That was awesome. So it's not just falcons that migrate. There's other animals that do too, but a lot of people think that all birds migrate. That's actually not quite true. I bet all of you recognize our good friend. Here's my friend, Louie. Oh, do you know what kind of an animal Louie is? Louie, oh. That's right, Louie is a cardinal. And I bet a lot of you see cardinals in your yards and you can even see cardinals right in the middle of winter time. Instead of migrating and instead of hibernating, birds like cardinals, they just stay out. They'll hunker down in bushes. They'll hunker down in thickets. But whenever it's a nice day, you'll see them out maybe eating some holly berries, um, they'll, any insects they can find if there's any out there. So the cardinal is a bird that will stick around whereas the peregrine falcon is the one that migrates. But not all animals that migrate are birds. Hmm, did you know that? I don't know. Oh. oh, that's right. You know what? We have another animal to meet, a migrator. Her name is Regina. Would you like to say goodbye to Louie, everybody? You're so sweet, Louie. All right, it's time to meet our last animal friend. Her name is Regina. And Regina likes to eat green leaves. So I'm going to get her out. Here she comes. I'm putting her on a leaf. Oh, Regina. She's enjoying this leaf. <laughs> Regina is an animal that you might have in your backyard in the summertime. And they like to eat leaves of a very special plant called milkweed. Regina is a caterpillar. 
She's a caterpillar. And the caterpillar will eat the leaves and she'll munch away and she's very, very hungry, right? Caterpillars, very, very hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as she's eating, she grows and grows. And eventually, wait, what's that? She just said she's not hungry anymore. What? She said, I can just put the leaf away. Okay, I'll put that away. There we are. So what's now she's really not doing anything. What's happening? What's happening, Regina? Oh, my goodness. Something is changing with Regina. What is going on here? Oh, Regina, you're completely changing. Whoa, it's the summertime is ending, fall is coming, and you have changed the way you look. I don't even hardly recognize you anymore. You're just like, boop, hanging out. She's a chrysalis now. Regina went from being a caterpillar, eating leaves in the summertime, to being a chrysalis. She's just hanging out. She put a little strand of silk that was super strong right on something like a tree branch. And now she's just hanging out as a chrysalis. Can you say the word chrysalis? Awesome. So inside the chrysalis, something pretty awesome is happening. Something is changing. And after a few weeks, the chrysalis begins to kind of move a little. It begins to wiggle. What in the world is happening now? The chrysalis, whoa, whoa, is turning into, oh, whoa, wow, whoa, shake those wings out, Regina, wow, wee, they look a little soft. And that's because when she first comes out of the chrysalis, her wings are wet. So she has to crawl up onto a stick or a log. And she has to stretch her wings out into the sun so they get nice and, and hard and stiff. They get nice and ready for flying. That's right. This is a monarch butterfly. There's all different kinds of butterflies that live here in North America. And the monarch is one of the most amazing of all the butterflies because monarchs migrate. Monarchs actually will fly thousands of miles. People think of butterflies being so delicate, but monarchs have the ability to fly for thousands of miles. They all migrate to one very special place in Mexico. Now, not all monarchs migrate. Some of them, they don't. Some of them will stick around right in the area they were born. But some of the, some of the monarchs will migrate and they fly and fly to get to Mexico to spend the winter. And then they fly back to their homes in North America for the summertime. So in fall, animals have to get ready. In the fall, animals have to gather food and bury it, or they have to maybe hibernate. So they have to eat a lot of food in the fall so they can sleep all winter long. And then some animals migrate. They will travel long distances to get away from the cold of the winter time. And the monarch butterfly is truly an amazing animal. And today we are just about finished learning about animals in the fall and the winter. We're gonna be leaving you by flying like a butterfly. <laughs> my name is Cobra Caroline. This is my friend Regina. We are from Kids Nature Shows. If you have any questions about any of the animals that you met today or anything at all about fall or winter, you are welcome to email me with any questions at all. The email is kidsnatureshows at gmail.com. But for right now, I'd like to ask everybody once again to stand up. And I want you 
to spread your wings out. Remember, your arms are your wings. So I want you to spread them all the way out. And I want you to start flapping your wings like a butterfly, flapping your wings. You're migrating, you're flying away for the winter. And it's time for me to say, bye-bye butterflies. Bye-bye butterflies. It's been so much fun meeting all of you today. I hope that you've enjoyed meeting some of the animal friends from Kids Nature Shows. Bye-bye butterflies. Have a happy fall and a happy, happy winter. See you later. All right.